Welcome to the BioVispera channel. Our topic today is on a perspective overview of mycology of fungal diseases and its considerations. If you are new here, we are a group of retired professors sharing bite-sized videos in life sciences. Let's dive into the topic for today. Fungi are everywhere. They are sometimes big such as mushrooms, but sometimes they are also too small to see with the naked eye. Fungi reside as saprophytes in the soil and on decaying plant material. We might ask ourselves the question, are fungi prokaryptic or eukaryotic? The answer is fungi are eukaryotic. With a range of internal membrane systems, membrane-bound organelles, and a well-defined cell wall which is composed largely of polysaccharides. There are millions of fungal species and they come in all sorts of sizes, shapes and scientists are continuing to study more new species, but only a few hundred of them can make people sick. Molds, yeasts and mushrooms are all types of fungi. Let's take a look at the three categories in detail. Molds or filamentous fungi molds reproduce by means of spores produced by asexual cell division or as a result of sexual reproduction. Next, we have yeasts, which are predominantly unicellular eukaryotes. An example is baker's yeast which is used to make bread for food. Most yeasts reproduce by an asexual process called budding in which the cell develops a protuberance, which enlarges and eventually separates from the parent cell. The majority of the other fungi exhibit dimorphism which means they are capable of changing their growth to either a mycelial or yeast phase depending on the growth conditions. Lastly, we have multicellular fungi that are large and visible for instance mushrooms and toadstools that might grow on decaying leaf litter. Earlier we mentioned that there are easily millions of fungal species but only a few hundred of them can make people sick. Some fungi can establish an infection in all exposed individuals. Others, such as Candida and Aspergillus species, are opportunist pathogens which ordinarily cause disease only in a compromised host. In some mycoses the form and the severity of the infection depend on the degree of exposure to the fungus, the site and the method of entry into the body, and the level of immunocompetence of the host. Some fungi may cause serious, occasionally fatal, toxic effects in man, either following ingestion of poisonous toadstools or consumption of moldy food that contains toxic secondary metabolites, known as mycotoxins. Lastly, allergic disease of the airways may result from inhalation of fungal spores upon exposure. Fungi can cause many different types of illnesses, including asthma or allergies, rashes or infections on the skin and nails. For systemic fungal infections, it can trigger lung infections associated with pneumonia with symptoms similar to the flu or tuberculosis upon spore inhalation or bloodstream infections. Should the infection goes to the brain, it can even trigger meningitis. Opportunistic infections are infections that happen because a person's immune system is weakened. These illnesses can be caused by bacteria, viruses or fungi. Many fungal infections are opportunistic infections. They affect patients with organ transplantation, stem cell transplantation or just generally hospitalized, weak, young and elderly patients. Patients who are born with a weakened immune system or those who may have an illness that attacks the immune system such as HIV. Some medicines like corticosteroids or cancer chemotherapy can also lower the body's ability to fight infections. If an individual have a weakened immune system, one should be aware that fungal infections can happen. It is clear that infection most often arises due to deficiencies in the host rather than because of any inherent pathogenic properties of the fungus. Antigenic variation on the surface of candida cells may help the organism to avoid host defenses. Cellular immunity is suppressed by cell wall manan, the capsular mucopolysaccharide and melanin. The pathogenesis of the four major fungal diseases namely coccidioidomycosis, blastomycosis, histoplasmosis 
and paracoxidioidomycosis are typically caused by dimorphic fungi. These infections are being seen with increasing frequency in patients compromised by disease or drug treatment. In transplant patients, for example, these fungi are among the most frequent causes of mortality due to infection. Fungal disease outbreaks are rare. An outbreak occurs when two or more people get sick from contact with the same source, sometimes in the same time or place. This can happen outdoors or in a healthcare setting, such as a hospital. In the news, we will find that reports on outbreaks worldwide including more prominently the rise of drug-resistant fungi strains. During the COVID-19 outbreak in India, it is also reported that black fungus infection rates are also rapidly spreading. Henceforth, it remains critical that detecting the fungal outbreaks early is important so that the people affected can get the right treatment and so that health officials can prevent others from getting sick. It's important to consider fungal diseases in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic because the symptoms of some fungal diseases can be like those of COVID-19, including fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Conforming diagnosis of fungal infections can also help avoid unnecessary prescription of antifungals, which could increase the resistance to antifungal drugs. What are antifungal drugs? They treat fungal infections by killing or stopping the growth of dangerous fungi in the body. Fungi can develop antimicrobial resistance when germs like bacteria and fungi develop the ability to defeat the drugs designed to kill them that means the germs are not killed and continue to grow. Currently, only a small number of antifungal drug types exist, so resistance can severely limit treatment options. For instance, topical antifungals are used to treat fungal skin and nail infections. These medications work by preventing the fungal cells from growing. They may contain ingredients such as myconazole, clotrimazole, ketoconazole, turbinafine, econazole, and amarolfine. They may come in many different brands and dosage forms such as cream, gel, lotion, powders, nail lacquers. Solutions and Spray Invasive fungal infections pose an important threat to public health and are an underrecognized component of antimicrobial resistance, an emerging crisis worldwide. Across a period of profound global environmental change and expanding at-risk populations, human infecting pathogenic fungi are evolving resistance to all licensed systemic antifungal drugs. Ongoing research by scientists continue to highlight the main mechanisms of antifungal resistance and explore the similarities and differences between bacterial and fungal resistance to antimicrobial control. From a global health coordination level, national agencies need to discuss the research and innovation topics that are needed for risk reduction strategies aimed at minimizing the emergence of resistance in pathogenic fungi where cooperation and education would be necessary in addition to monitoring surveillance, diagnostics, routes of transmission, novel therapeutics and methods to mitigate hotspots for fungal adaptation. It is without doubt that scientists will continue to steward our existing antifungal armamentarium and to direct the research and development of future therapies and interventions.